quit. Hi there, and welcome to a very special episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. I get the privilege of being here with Deborah Walton, also known as the Elegance Expert and author of the book, Je ne sais quoi. And Devereaux has a passion for helping ambitious, introverted women add a touch of class to their lives through personal coaching, her website, themodernlady.com, and her recent book, Je ne sais quoi. So Devereaux, we're so glad to have you here with us today. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Jamie. I'm delighted to be here. So we like to start our interviews with a just for fun question. And so the just for fun that we wanted to ask today is, what is your favorite prayer closet? And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be traditional, but where do you like to go just to feel close with God? I love this question so much. And believe it or not, my favorite prayer closet is actually my bathroom, um, specifically in my bathtub, because when I go in the bathtub, even when it's not filled with water, usually I go in when it's dry, um, I can close the shower curtain and I just feel like it's a small enclosed space. Um, I play worship music and I really enjoy just finding my center and feeling connected. I usually sit or kneel um, and it just really helps me to close the door of the bathroom and then close the the shower curtain and I just feel so close to God in my bathtub. <laughs> I, I love, the love question. that. Oh my goodness. Well, I love your answer. I have never heard that. I think I've heard the bathroom or the bathtub or shower, but never dry. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, um, you know, I actually one day was having a group of friends over and one of my friends um, spilled something and Two of them were kind of arguing and bickering, and I just felt like in that moment, I just needed to take some time for myself. And so typically, the, the best way for me to handle a stressful situation is to just remove myself so I can gather my thoughts and, and maintain my composure. And so they were arguing and cursing, and someone had spilled alcohol, and it was a red stain on... Um, a very light fabric and so I just I didn't know where to go I went into my bathroom <laughs> and I said you know what I'm just gonna get in the bathtub and that was really the first time that I found and created my favorite prayer closet that is good thank you for sharing that well um first of all I just I we talked a little bit about this just when we got on before recording that so your book is called je ne sais quoi and your name, Devereaux, is French, and you have this beautiful picture of Paris behind you. Can you just tell us a little bit about that and your connection with France and Paris and, and all of that? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, when I was younger, um, I always hated my name because I would go to the store and I could never find school supplies with my name on them. Oh. All of friends like Nicole and Brittany and Samantha had the erasers and the pencils with their names on them and I always hated my name. Of course people would butcher it and so I would get upset with them misspelling or mispronouncing it but I've definitely grown to love my name. So I joke with people that my mom was just watching a lot of the Golden Girls <laughs> when she was in the hospital um, but I'm really not sure how she came up with it. I think she just the name was was given to her as, as a revelation and it wasn't something that she really planned or brainstormed or researched. It kind of just um, was a blessing from God. And so um, my name means female goddess in French and um, it's very common, um, <clears throat> pardon me, last name in the French culture, it's a different spelling. So it has three E's. So um, I've just always been enchanted with France, and I feel like so many American women that are very interested in a life of elegance and luxury were really drawn to France just because they live so simply. It's very simple and refined and tasteful. It's a completely different lifestyle than what we have in America. And so I've always had this, this love connection um, with France, and the first time I've been to visit was actually in 2013. Um, so I stayed for two weeks. I was on a study abroad trip 
when I was in business school getting my MBA and it was definitely one of the best experiences of my life. So I'm looking forward to going back to France and visiting the Eiffel Tower again, but it's just such a, a magical place and just the, the love and, and the passion and the vibrant energy in the air is, is definitely something I, I certainly cherish about France. So when I was writing my book, I actually was going to title it Decorum. And I wanted to just have one word, keep it very simple, that really encompassed what the book was about and what women could benefit from, how it could really transform their lives. And so I thought decorum was a good fit. And I remember one day I was in the gym working out around 5 a.m. And I just heard the voice of God. He was like, je ne sais quoi. And I was like, what? what? What's going on? What's happening? And he literally gave me the name to the book because the book is about so much more than decorum. It's really not exclusive to actions and etiquette and behavior. Um, there's a lot in the book around mindset, presentation, appearance, style, wardrobe, and certainly most importantly, the idea of how to live intentionally and to live with your purpose. And so Je ne sais quoi really encompasses everything included in the book to really help women have that certain je ne sais quoi in their lives. I love that. And what I really appreciate about what you do is, you know, you might see the elegance expert or the modern lady and, and see some of your photos and think, oh, this is all about appearance, but it's not. Anyone who digs a little deeper can see that you're all about poise, character, presentation, self-value and self-worth and, you know, positive self-talk and, and just everything spiritual as well as external and that really does sum all of that up so um i'm just curious what inspired you to create the modern lady what was your your mission and goal and and what sparked that yes yes well thank you jamie i think that um living with character is is so important and that's really the core of of what it means to be a modern lady so my story behind the modern lady um several years ago i just got to a point in my life that i felt like i was stuck in a rut i was very frustrated with how I felt on a regular basis. I was working a job that I didn't really enjoy. And I just felt like I was in a place where the woman I wanted to be, the ideal woman was very different from who I was. There was a huge disconnect. And so after months of derailing and just really beating myself up and feeling frustrated, I just decided to make a change. I was driving home from work one day and um, I'll never forget it was in the fall of 2014 I was in traffic and I was just behind this car I passed this accident and I had all this time to just think and so I was like enough is enough like I I want a different life I want to feel empowered and inspired every day and I just I don't feel that right now and so I decided to in a sense give my life a makeover I started reading books and getting really plugged into the Bible spending daily time in prayer um, and really just investing in myself because it's very very easy for someone to focus on their career focus on friendships and family and relationships but when you really take some time for yourself to spend time getting to know and creating, discovering who you are, that's where you really have the opportunity to step into your personal power, which I call feminine power. And so really over the journey of, of about a year and a half, I invested in myself with my time, with my resources, coaches, books, um, different courses, of course, the word of God, getting more plugged in. And that really just helped me to step into my feminine power to really give myself and my life a makeover. And it was much more than just the superficial wardrobe, although wardrobe was a piece of it, but there was so much more internal work that went into that. And so I decided that I really wanted to help other women do the same. And the modern lady was born so that I could really inspire women to live every day and feel inspired, confident, and empowered. And confidence is the key. 
because personally, professionally, when you lack confidence, you are going to miss out on so many opportunities. And as women, we have a very, very different approach and mindset to challenges, conflict, and really just life in general. And so I found that with The Modern Lady, I'm able to help women fill the gap that they have between who they want to be and who they currently are. I love that. And, you know, you talk about helping women to add a touch of class to their lives. How would you define class? Well, class is, it's a timeless essence about who you are. It's how you carry yourself. I, I certainly define class as really just being tasteful. So in any area of your life, whether it's your behavior, your actions, your thoughts, being tasteful and really being able to have a level of poise and gracefulness. So what a lot of people don't think about is these tiny little situations just throughout your everyday life like going to pay for you know, Starbucks or when you are driving and getting ready to get in the next lane. Just being able to add a touch of tastefulness and gracefulness to what you do means that you are really making other people a priority. You're treating people with kindness and respect. And these are just you know, simple biblical principles that a lot of people, when we are stuck in a situation in a pinch or we get upset or we're maybe rushing, we forget to do. And so I would define class as really just being able to apply a, a level of tastefulness and gracefulness in every situation. Well, it's funny because I, it seems simple, but it's yeah. difficult because, and I tell my kids this sometimes in this day and age, the smallest acts of class, you know, or the smallest acts of um, being considerate or polite or gracious or kind or whatever, um, or even responsibility. I mean, it stands out because in this day and age, you just, you're not going to see it. And it, it just takes a small amount of that, just a touch of class <laughs> to really stand out and to really shine and, and to be that city on a hill, you know, that God wants us to be as believers, as women, as human beings. So I, I really appreciate that. Yes, it's simple, but it's not easy. And I actually mentioned that um, in my book, because it's true when you're in a situation, especially when you don't want to take the high road, when someone's being disrespectful, or you get upset, we really have to dig deep. And that's when our character truly shines. And so in order for us to really live like Christ, we have to do what's hard, and not what's comfortable and easy. Mm hmm. Well, what do you think the connection is between what we present outwardly and how we feel and how we operate on the inside? And which do you have an idea in your mind of which comes first? And is it cooperative or could you have one without the other? How do those things work together? That's a great question, Jamie. And I certainly think that almost everything in our lives stems from internally our thoughts, what we're thinking, what we're meditating on. And so for you to really navigate your actions, your behavior, your interactions with others, you have to effectively really be able to manage and monitor your thoughts. And this is Nyla peeping up. She's my multi poop puppy so i wanted you to right <laughs> yeah i wanted you to inter introduce her when she made her next appearance yes very yes. good she's sitting kind of low but now she's popping up she's in full view so this is nyla everyone <laughs> hi nyla thanks for joining us <laughs> yes she's excited to be here so i think it, it truly goes hand in hand but everything starts at the core it starts at the inside and internally what you're doing how you're really navigating different situations in terms of your thoughts. And this is why self-talk is so important. As women, anytime you're in a situation, especially when you're faced with a challenge, you are going to have some level of self-talk about your reaction or your thoughts or opinions. And what you are telling yourself is going to influence and inspire everything else. It influences what you think, what you do, what you say, and the outcome and the results that you have. 
And so as a quick example, let's say that this just happened to me with a, a family member the other day. Let's say that you're interested in looking for a new job. You want a new job opportunity. Maybe you want to try something a little bit different, but still in your field and you're looking online at positions. When you see something that you're interested in, looking at that description and thinking, wow, this is amazing. It's exactly what I've been looking for. I'm, I've got a perfect fit with my experience and my skill set. I'm going to apply. That type of self-talk is very uplifting and inspiring, and it's perfect to reinforce the actions it's going to take in order to apply for the job, follow up, interview, and get the offer. But on the other hand, if you come across that position and you're thinking, oh my goodness, it says five years and I only have three years of experience doing that and I don't have that certification. If you have negative self-talk, you can easily spiral out of control and it can pull you away from what God may desire for you in your life because you're talking yourself out of it. And so it's incredibly important to really monitor and manage that self-talk that you have because it really does drive everything else. And I think what you said is really important that there's always a level of self-talk going on. I don't know that we're always aware that it's going on. And I think being aware that that's the case is probably a really important first step to know it's going on. Because just as you're saying that, I'm thinking of a couple of situations recently where, wow, I really, there was self-talk going on in that situation. And whether it was good or bad, we need to acknowledge it so that if it is negative, we can correct it or, you know, go to God and say, what, what was this about? And why was I feeling this way? And what is, you know, your plan for me? But I, I think that's a really good point. There's always some kind of self-talk going on. And I know se several of our listeners have told us about a struggle with negative self-talk or negative self-image. And what role would you say that prayer plays since we're a prayer podcast? We'll bring it back to prayer. But what role would you say that prayer plays in that negative self-talk and elevating ourselves out of that into a more positive mindset? Absolutely. And prayer is so important. I think spending that time daily uh, with God is, is really important. And so one thing that I recommend um, for women to do is to spend time in gratitude and that could look that could play out and you can apply that in different ways. You could spend time in prayer, um, being grateful to God for everything that you have, just spending time with him daily, thanking him for all the blessings that he's given you. You can spend time thinking about things that you're grateful for. And when you are praying and having that time getting close to God, you're able to have those thoughts and have that mindset and really just fortify yourself with that positive energy. Um, but certainly being able to, if it's a challenge, if it's an area that you know you're struggling with, humble yourself and ask him for help. A lot of us really want to do things on our own and that's mm -hmm. not the way we're supposed to do them. We can't get very far by ourselves. We always need, his supernatural um, powers and, and his blessings and wisdom and guidance in order for us to really enjoy what he wants us to have personally and professionally. And so I think the first place to start is certainly with asking God for help in any area that you may need it, whether it's your um, self-talk or your image or your confidence, or it could be even something else professionally, but wherever there's a deficit, asking God to really give you that guidance, that strength, that power, and help you to overcome that challenge. And so humbling yourself to just ask him for help, letting him know where you are having those challenges or weaknesses and asking him to, to fulfill and fortify you um, in those areas and those gaps is, is a wonderful place to start. And then I think gratitude is just so important. Um, in my book, I talk about gratitude journaling every day and writing things down that you're grateful for because it reinforces in your mind so that you'll carry that with you throughout the day. But any time that you are maybe upset or discouraged, just maybe take a few moments, go to the bathroom if you're at work or if you can get outside or just find a, a private place for a quiet moment and just thank God for something. 
Because if you're focused on gratitude, all of the negativity, all of the conflicts, all of the challenges become much more manageable when you can focus on what's going well in your life and not what's maybe not perfect or not what you wanted or hoped for. Um, because we all have setbacks, but when you are spending your time and your energy focused on positivity, you'll certainly have a, a much more fulfilled life. Yes, absolutely. I, I feel like though, as Christian women, a lot of times we have this barrier. We kind of feel like it's selfish to pursue goals or to pray for what we want in life. Sure, it's okay to pray down your prayer list for your friends or for, uh, you know, the world or whatever it is that's on your heart. But when it comes to ourselves, I think we feel kind of hesitant to push forward and ask God because we're afraid that maybe what we want isn't what God wants or, you know, just that timid mentality. What would you say to us as women that, that struggle with that sometimes? Absolutely. And this is something that really is, is a very common challenge. I always think about right before an airplane takes off, the stewardess is going through the safety instructions and they say that if an oxygen mask pops down, put on your own mask before putting on the mask of someone else. And it's so important to have time to make yourself a priority, especially for women that are mothers, you are the last priority every time, whether it's prayer, your health, your mental health, your physical health, exercise, whatever it is, you're always last. And so it's really important for women to make themselves a priority so that we can take care of and honor and love and cherish who God has created us to be. I think for women that are fearful of praying for what they want, um, you can always ask God and then at the end say, please have your way or I put this in your hands. Mm -hmm. So dear Lord, I would love to learn how to play tennis and practice so I can compete locally in my city. But if that's not your will, Lord, please have your way. You can always end a prayer request really submitting you know, to God, whatever his will to have that be done. And I think that's so important because it is a balance. I think so many of us want different things and we don't know whether or not these are our heavenly or earthly desires. But at the end of every request, just making sure that you're submitting to the will of God to have him be the priority and, and that final say, um, you know, really, I think, helps him to, to smile when he's looking down on us in terms of our request to him. And so, you know, for women that are fearful of something that they want, um, you know, sometimes there's fear of, well, I don't know if this is what God wants, or it's fear of, I don't know if I can do this. But often when I speak with women, it's fear of what if I actually get what I'm wanting or what I'm working toward. I want the promotion, I want to move to a new city, I want to change careers, I want to get married, what happens if I actually get what I want? And so for the women that are fearful of success and fearful of really having the desires of their heart, I really would just encourage you to spend time in prayer, asking God to give you the strength and the wisdom, the courage to really just live out the best life that he has for you because God wants all of us to be prosperous in, in different ways. And so sometimes we have to get out of our own way to allow him to truly bless us. Yes, I, I definitely believe that. I love that. That was very well said. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your book specifically, what, what your book encompasses. Absolutely. So I have it here to just show you really quickly. So I this love is your cover. Je ne sais quoi. Thank you so much. And what I wanted to do was really give women a, a handbook, a guide to giving their lives a, a makeover in every single area. So it starts with mindset and there's a different chapter that focuses on every area of your life so that you can truly step into your feminine power. And so what that looks like is I, I give the analogy of hitting the reset button. <laughs> so it gives you the opportunity to really look at where you're currently at, 
read the principles, read the strategies. They're full of examples, but I've got a lot of actionable advice and actionable um, exercises throughout the book so that you can truly apply the, the practical strategies and wisdom included. So whether or not you um, love or, or are looking to improve your wardrobe or your communication skills, your career success, there is a chapter in this book in, about every single area of your life so that you can truly thrive. That's what I want women to do is to thrive and to live every day as their best. And so many of us truly do accept average, mediocre lives because we don't know or don't try to have anything more than that. And so I really want women to live a magnificent life, feeling empowered and inspired every day. And my book can definitely help you to do that. Well, I cannot wait. My copy's on the way. I just got a notice yesterday it shipped, so I can't wait. I can't wait to read it. Thank um, you. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave our listeners with and including how they can connect with you? Absolutely. Well, to any woman listening to this that really just feels like she's maybe stuck in, in a place in her life, she wants something better for herself or for her family, I really just encourage you to know that you have greatness within you and God has blessed you with so much, so much talent, so much that needs to really be shared with the world. And a lot of women are stuck in fear, whether it's fear of judgment, fear of success, fear of acceptance, whatever it is. And so I really encourage you to just spend time in prayer, asking God for the wisdom and the courage so that you can truly live within your feminine power because the greatness within you is meant to be shared. That's why God has placed it within you so that so many of us in the world can enjoy the, the different gifts that you have. So if you're interested in learning more about me or my book, Je ne sais quoi, you can find me at themodernlady.com. I'm also on YouTube posting videos every single week at The Modern Lady. And my book, Je ne sais quoi, is on my website as well as on Amazon. So thank you so much for having me today. And I was delighted to be here, Jamie. Oh, I was so excited to have you here too, Devereaux. And how can we be praying for you? We're going to close up in prayer. How can we pray for you today? Okay, well, thank you so much for the request. Um, I certainly just want to pray for um, good health, happiness, and um, success. I, I really have focused a lot more on intangible things as higher priorities over the years. And so as long as I can maintain my, my health and happiness, I'll be successful. And I'm just grateful to God every day that I have those two things. Great. Well, thank you so much just for what, for your heart, for elevating women to the place where they're exercising the gifts that God has given them. We just, I'm, I'm just excited to see how God continues to use your ministry and your business to do that. Thank so um, let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for bringing Devereaux to us today to share her message and her heart and just um, to use the gifts that you have given her and just out of the overflow of that to elevate women, God. I just pray for anyone listening today who is struggling with negative self-talk or any kind of um, just negative self-image, God, that you would bring healing, that you would bring truth and enlightenment to their mind and to their spirit. And Lord, for Devereaux, God, we just pray your blessing after blessing on her. We pray for health, that you would be preserving her body and keeping her healthy. We pray for happiness and joy that no matter what her circumstances, God, that she would just be radiating your joy to those around her. And we just thank you so much that you can do that and that you are enough to do that for us. And we just pray that you would launch her career forward, Father, that you would give her success for your glory and that she would just, if there are any roadblocks in the way right now between her and reaching more women, that you would remove them and just powerfully send her out to change lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That was beautiful.